Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 63. In this episode, VOD TV, Dude, Where's My 20 Meg Line? And Clever Bot Strikes Back, The Blueprint. And Donuts. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 63. Um, with us this week, uh, we have the usual crowd. So it's Johan Els, who, who you can find at uh, Johan underscore Els. Much less now. Social networking is just time. Such a time. waste of time at the moment. But one day we will have free time again. Exactly. So and then we can join all these if things. If you really want to reach me, send me a nice email at whatever. <laughs> we, we've had an entry. <laughs> had one. One. Well, actually, we'll get to it now. We'll get to it now. Yes, welcome. Uh, Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> um, then we also have, I've lost your, Luke Pocket. Sorry, I lost your surname there. Pocket, yes. That's me. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can find him at Freak. Freak, yeah. yeah. It's F R K, yeah, or I, I like to call it Frick or Frick, yeah. <laughs> frick, yeah. Okay, frick, I'll, yeah. Okay, is that now on what, Twitter? Twitter, yes. Oh, All Twitter. Freaky, yeah. I'll, I'll finish his sentences <laughs> for yes, you tonight. Uh, I, I like that I cause great confusion. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, just, uh, the sentence we finished for you was on Twitter. On Twitter. On Twitter. We asked you also got a uh, project you're doing. Uh, E-Dev. E-Dev Killed Boards. Yes. yes. Um, so if you play Eve, you've probably come across one of my kill boards. <laughs> I do the data dumps, so I don't work on it quite as much as I used to, but um, I enjoy it. And basically so it tells people who got killed where, yes. what If you play behind. Eve, you'll know that it's about PvP, so you know, you know who killed whom, where, what time, with what. What they dropped, <laughs> everything. When cool. you say you work on data dumps, what does that mean? So what they do is that CCP themselves, the guys that make the game, um, they release an MSSQL dump of their data, and they allow the players to trawl through it to do whatever they need to do with the data. So you can do any kind of lookup. You even get to see the little, you know, test items that they have and the what they call like the, I don't know, what, you, what like joke items that mm -hmm. aren't really in the game but are just there for folk like me uh, <laughs> troll through the database. <laughs> troll through the database. So, so only people see, it, see yeah. them are the people who go through the database. Yes. So uh, admins. Yeah. So when you say you work on the, on the data dumps, you grab the data dumps and upload them I to the I convert it to another format. So we've got a format that's, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's my sequel, but uh, it doesn't quite work in the same manner that the... Um, as you receive it. So I just convert it, run a few scripts upon it. Cool. After so Janus introduced himself to being here tonight, <laughs> I see you end your welcome page as development version may break your board, your database, or your marriage. Um, I'm not sure about the marriage aspect. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sure someone's just having silly buggers. <laughs> All right, so continue Hello, the introductions. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Jan. <laughs> I'm Jan. Sorry, I, I'm checking. I sit next to Tim in, in this podcast. I sound make problem, so I'm just checking and helping on the side here. Yeah. Uh, no uh, we have uh, Jan Vermeulen from My Broadband. Uh, Jan VZA. That's Ooh. right. Um, and staff writer from My Broadband. Throw all your hate at him. <laughs> is, uh, is that not your permanent uh, title with My Broadband? Because I, I understood staff writer to be... The best story of the day would get promoted to staff writer. No, no, no. The, the staff writer is actually uh, uh, something, is a byline. That's the, the, the term we give to the, well, the part after the by <laughs> in an article. So you go, yeah. article, uh, for example, um, Blackberry Bold 9900 essay launch details revealed by Jan Vermeulen. Mm -hmm. So that's the byline, right? Um, and when it says by staff writer, Typically, that means that there's not enough original content in that article to attribute it to any particular writer. Okay. So it's usually a press release um, or, or something like that that came through or a blog post. So Sometimes you, you take a Google blog post yeah. as well and you, you rework it. You strip out the, the self-promotional stuff and you just leave the core Google information. Google promote themselves. But in any case... So what you're saying is you, you pull the short stick then every time on the story. <laughs> well, that, well, it's more, more, it's more running, of a joke, running really. joke we have. A lot oh. of people read the staff writings, get very angry with it, not realizing 
there is no real person behind Staff Writer. Yes. Like me, that's why I asked the damn question. Yeah. No, <laughs> you'll see, th- th- there's a lot of articles on my broadband attributed to me in my own yeah. personal yes. capacity, and that's articles with um, content that I used my own fingers to write okay. um, rather than the control C control I like keys. very much that you have got like a profile for the staff writer as well that's silly I like it <laughs> <laughs> I haven't actually gone that far I know there's a picture no. Cl- click, click on the profile yeah. I'll do that and we, we <laughs> must actually change that up like there was sort of a goal was to change the staff writer up every couple of months but talking about amazing pictures our mixer yes we have <laughs> the mixer as our mixer the person who shall not be named um, Some say the mixer is so beautiful <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's hear the end of this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Be waiting. That flowers bloom in her presence. Their presence. <laughs> in <laughs> its presence. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I'm really bad at bad at thinking of stick stuff on the on the fly. See, that's why you do it beforehand. <laughs> this is why. I also, no. this is this is why I I don't do rap battles. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> distraction thought there. Um, yeah. The p- things coming up in the calendar. Um, nothing so much uh, in the next week or two, but there's a whole ton of things. We've got Taste of Johannesburg, Ch- uh, Taste of Johannesburg coming up in about two weeks' time, starting the 15th. It's actually pretty cool off Johannesburg. It's well worth doing it at Monte Cassino. Then the week after that, something very very cool is our week. I must actually get a hold of them and chat about. We're going to get a one of these speakers to come through and chat to us. Uh, the speakers we had last year were incredible, um, and I'm looking forward. I'm going to be there, and I'm looking really forward to being there. I must point out, Tim, that in the past week, you've now just missed probably one of the most important birthdays. Linux, 25th of August. Ah, oh. yeah. Yes. Is, That's is, is day. it a star date? It's still here today. I'm checking. <coughs> Any case. Isn't it? Didn't happen. Okay. No, uh, that's true. Uh, apparently, uh, this uh, 25th of August, uh, 20 years ago, was a date that Lunas wrote the article inviting people worldwide to actually contribute to a what was then a project and mm. has now actually evolved into Linux. Yeah, and he famously said it's just going to be something small he does on the side. It's a very humble post. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No grand design. What I didn't pick up is how did he do this? Was this in the paper or in a magazine? Probably BBS. Yeah, yeah. It was a forum post or something like that. Yeah. So for people who don't know what a BBS is. Google that. I will, I will <laughs> try and make the noise. <laughs> <laughs> and if you really want to be in line with it, do it on Linux. Absolutely. If well, that's the thing. No, it couldn't have been. Use Lynx. Because that's when he started Linux. No, so that's a very Google good question. BBS is <laughs> of your Linux PC. Oh, okay. In Lynx. In Lynx. It if has to doing, be Lynx. If yeah. you're doing it properly. If you don't know what Lynx is, go Google that too. <laughs> anyway, it's going to charge you. Before we get distracted and, and, and pause there again. All right. Um, 20 megahertz ADSLs apparently been seen out in the wild. Uh, and all of us want w- have only one question about this. Where's, Where's my uh, 10 <laughs> megs? Yeah. Where? Uh, I can't say that yeah. question. I have 10 megs at home. I would rather have it here, though, I must be honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously here it would be far more useful um, um, and to so us. But Not so much that you want 10 megs for 10 megs down, which is lovely. I'm not going to complain. Um, but it's up. It's it's the one megabits per second up speed for for streaming video would be awesome. Yes. It's just the quality of the video would just be so much better. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you could always go try and get uh, iBurst to lace uh, what their Metronet, their Metronet offering to your house. But I I hear that's significantly more expensive than. Oh, uh, slightly. <laughs> th- but it's something ASL. you can actually physically get. Indeed. So how expensive is it really? Yeah, exactly. As as opposed to ten meg ADSL. But uh, Which you, you can get? Y- you can get if you crack the nod from our overlords at Telcom. Well, okay, but as a resident of Centurion, how do you crack that nod? I you mean, don't. Yeah. Especially <laughs> considering that, that you, can, you wake up in the morning, you look up, and there's the knock. And you're like, hi, Telcom knock. How about some 10 meg ADSL down here for us plebs? But uh, just to put it in perspective for those people that know, we actually broadcast. If we look over the wall, we can see the whole of the Telcom NOC. Yeah, NOC okay. being the National Operations the Center. center. The and biggest it's not in the distance. wall in the world, all that stuff. It's not in the distance. It's really literally across the like road from where we distance. are. Yeah, but apparently there, there are issues to take into account, such as... Very bad old infrastructure. No, no, no. Um, oh, uh, it's you recently need... upgraded infrastructure. So Centurion's mm. D-slams might, might be more recent than, say, Rosebank's. 
And so they swap uh, out. I've heard from a re previous close source that our ma major problem is we don't have Metro Ethernet coming into our exchange. Oh, so, so it's actually an old ADSL. exchange. ATM, you mean? ATM, sorry. Yeah. And that's until we get upgraded to Metro Ethernet, which is unlikely to happen anytime soon, apparently, we won't get. Uh, that, that, that's kind of contrary to, to, to what we've been hearing, which is that for the major centers, they're definitely going to be yoinking out ATM and putting in Ethernet. So anytime soon is up for debatable. That might have meant in the next two years, which might be accurate. Yeah. So no, only yeah, in the so next two the years next will we years, see yeah. 20 meg instant sharing. Or 10. Eh. That's too long. Yeah. <laughs> but what, they, what they're trying to do um, from reading the article is they're um, shortening the local loop. For, for those that don't know what that is, that's the last mile. Um, from your house to the exchange. And some folks are multiple kilometers away from an exchange. And then that means that the maximum speed you get out of your ADSL line is, is low. So there are some folks, for instance, out in Moraleta Park and Gartfontein, who lives, live so far away from the, the, the exchange that they're connected to that even though they've got a four meg product, they only sync at two or three megs yeah. a second. So what Telcom is aiming to do is to shorten the local loop, not by putting up more exchanges, um, but by putting down sort of proxies. Well, they're pretty much going to run fiber through to, let's say, down the street. Like the curb, um, yeah. And then basically they're going to cut all the wires and join them into that box. Yes. And basically all, all your communication will run into that box and then down the fiber. Yes. Um, and the main thing is the longer that cable is, the more noise it adds, and especially if you've got old copper, which is quite noisy and, and all the rest of it. Yeah, and uh, less copper in the ground and shorter copper in the ground means less copper getting stolen, hopefully. So bonus, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Like Kai Lamy can really do with this. <laughs> but, but, well, they <laughs> said that they've nudge. now given up with the cop in the ground and now gone for it. Part of the car train, apparently. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I hope car train gets the the issues uh, sorted. We haven't heard anything this week. Last week, uh, the the the, the no, 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 one no, week no, so no. No. they had an hour to hour delay. Thank you. Yesterday, uh, yesterday. No, 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 no. The delay effect? ended up five hours after the yeah, if, because yeah. I actually started speaking to people on the train that eventually they got stuck in the train for about an hour and a half to two hours, then got transferred or, or sorry, pushed or pulled to a nearest station. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, one of the um, trains lost the connection with the power lines. Actually got stuck between here and, Mid and Centur uh, between Centurion and Midrand on the track. Oh, no. So that Jeez. blocks everything. Well, but that's not a cable thing. One bound. That's not cable Still theft. power. Yeah. But it's not theft. It's uh, that sounds it's more a, a train technical difficulties. Yes. Anyway, train breaking. Uh, sad news. Um, Steve Jobs is stepping down. Yeah. Is going to still. This be depends on your perspective. Exactly. I was just going to say that. <laughs> I think it's sad news. But for instance, if you go to XDA TV and you go listen to Azri Knock, he burst out laughing. <laughs> so very little. Uh, uh, well, put this. Way, I have to be sad for, for one of our ex presenters, Barry. Because I know he said. Yeah. Look, I, I I think it's it's a sad day, but uh, mortality is unfortunately about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mortality is unfortunately something that's going to catch up with all of us one day. And also, I, w I want Apple to be as good as possible because it means that Google's then going to be as good as possible, and it's just going to lift everybody up. So I want everybody to be fighting and trying to do their best. I'll do trying to other. kill one another. Well, not quite kill each other. Well, that's what they're doing now. Which is sweet. <laughs> well, <yeah. Win. laughs> old, old Steve Jobs standing in front of his Apple crowd going, make no mistake, Android wants to kill iPhone. So that's, that's how they see it. And maybe that's not a bad thing. Uh, it's well, it's are very you, you're antagonistic. Telling us that Apple doesn't want to kill Android. Exactly. Well, he didn't say that. But we all want to <laughs> see it. Come on. <laughs> yeah. No, no, go at it. It's like seeing gladiators in the ring. I mean, it's absolute voyeurism, but <laughs> it's fun as hell. And hopefully now with uh, Google getting all the patents that they've bought, uh, they're going to well. stop trying to litigate and start innovating again. Highly unlikely. <laughs> well, no, well, from what I've heard, it is actually quite possible because the, the a lot of speculations are, are a lot closer some, now. There's some good speculations that they might actually just take all those patents and make them open. There you go. That could shake up the market. That would shake up the market. That would be cool, but it would also leave them with no defense. No, but you would have to sort of do it. What's left to defend? If you, if you sue us or take a thing, you lose access to all that, and we then allow to use them against you. Exactly what Microsoft did when cool. they bought up all that stuff. And now they say, oh, if anybody, they give you, if you use Microsoft products in your company, they give you a guarantee. If anybody tries to sue you, we'll protect you. Mm. Because they hold a lot of those patents. So yeah. anything We'd could happen. Yeah, no, so it's I've got to say, we've got to say this. Thank you very much, uh, my broadband, for the Bultong and Donuts. Yes. <laughs> I'm loving this Bultong. It's very uh, nice. We, we, we're preparing for the my broadband conference in October. 
Yep. That's quite a long preparation you guys are doing. <laughs> We're going to need a lot more bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get fighting fit. <laughs> anyway, this is from your previous comments. Um, next top story, I'm just going to move this along. Video TV, apparently some more details have emerged. Yeah, uh, VOD TV, uh, that's Southtel's. Southtel is an, is an upcoming uh, pay TV hopeful. Um, so they are planning on, on launching a pay TV service, but on demand only. And they actually name their on demand service correctly because they call this their offering Southtel Push VOD TV. Yay. It's not a pull service, it's a push service. What that means is you don't click a button and download something, it gets pushed at your PVR. It's there already, you just pay to unlock it. Yeah. And they're going to have hard drives, and they're going to put, unlike. Uh DSTV, who you've got a cell phone through and then they unlock it via the satellites. And we're going to put like a SIM card or something in there so you can speak back. So you actually your PPR will do all, all Yeah, the they, they've listed a couple of things. Uh, one of them is not putting a SIM card in the, in the device, but it, you could hook it up to the internet. Yeah. So you could have like a, a router, for instance, whether that's mobile, AD, uh, ADSL, whatever. Hook that up to your decoder, do it that way. You could do it via SMS is another thing they listed. All of these things are sort of stuff that's on their website, but unconfirmed. Mm. Um, they're not talking about their commercial offering. They're not talking about how much it's going to cost. Yeah, I know that people even theorize that maybe there will be Wi-Fi built into some of these devices and you can actually use it as a hotspot and then buy Celsi band or whoever they go with, um, get bandwidth via that to power you know, for your home. Sure. Cool. Um, yeah, anyway, so this, this is interesting. I think more pay TV um, is, uh, is, a, is a, will make more pay TV competition is definitely a good thing. It remains to be seen what's going to happen with Southtel. And then sort of breaking news, we'll only run this story tomorrow, um, is I had a chat with the CEO. And um, he confirmed because another, another sort of prolific television columnist wrote about it, um, that they've delayed their launch. It was supposed to launch in September. Yeah. It's not being launched in September anymore. And he's confirmed to me now that they've pushed it back to Q4. So, um, so, um, so yeah, the, the, the CEO's name is Oscar Dubé, and um, they, they're still testing the service. Whether it's going to happen in Q4 or not remains to be seen. Um, yeah, but one, one does, one does well, hold look, thumbs. The more competition in the yes. market, the better. I'm still waiting for one to do it over ADSL or whatever, which is not going to happen anytime soon. I'm well aware we don't have the infrastructure in this country, but that's eventually we want it. We well, want I, would, I would love that, to be DSTV honest. DSTV yeah. is doing that, hey? Um, I ran the article. They, they, they're doing DSTV box office. They're putting it online. Oh, End okay, of the year. Cool. End of the year. Very cool. To all South Africans, not just MAP subscribers, they said. Oh, okay. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Also, what pricing? Yeah, that was my next question. Well, uh, right now it runs a 25 rand a movie. Now, interesting thing there. Yeah, that's just easier to rent the movie we, still. We, we, we're looking once again at, at Net, uh, Netstream. Netflix. 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 And that's about 120 rand for unlimited subscription. Wow. Okay, but that's not the latest movies. Fine. Where I'm these guys to are going to try and push. Yes, all of these no, guys no. are going to try and push the latest L movies. Like, like, a, DS, uh, like a, D, a DVD store, yeah. for example. But um, yeah. But but four dollars on Google Movies to rent a movie. Yeah. So four dollars. Yeah, it's twenty rand. bucks. So it, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, look, and, and the guys from from Multi Choice did say now this is their word, and I know people uh, dispute it. But um, I mean, the, the fact is is that they're the ones who know how this work works. So mm -hmm. I mean, like, I, I'm not. I don't have the information to dispute it. You know, with them. But when, when I asked how the commercial model works, they explained that some of the movies they sell at a, they rent at a profit, but some of them they don't. So and people people are like, okay, but you buy the movie and you just sell it on. But that's not actually how it works. I mean, that that's how we understand the model because we can just you know buy, buy a movie it. on a DVD yes. and show it to as many people as we like, right? But no, we can't because that license is actually restricted. You're not allowed to use that DVD for public, yeah, public broadcast, public display. Yeah, not so, broadcast display. But display, yeah. Um, so you can't even like. I mean, technically, it would it would be illegal for you to charge entry to your house to to show mm, this movie, right? Yeah. Um, and so what DSTV does is they actually pay per rental. They pay royalties on every single rental. That's the that's apparently how it works. Together, the more they they sell, the more the, the lower the cost per unit yep. becomes. Uh, I think it's it's all part of some sort of high level negotiations. Um, I'd love to be able to fly on the wall there uh, one day, but. Um, yeah, 
uh, so some of the movies um, come in under 25 Rand and they, they rent it at a profit. And some of the movies don't. They come in at a, at a higher cost per rental royalty. Is there come some Just kind of system for basis there? I mean, is it like here, yeah, movie X will be this much and movie Y will be this much? <laughs> the or? more popular movies. So let's say they get a, a blockbuster. Okay. Iron expensive. Man 7. Fine. Then yeah. um, Black some, Swan. Yes. Or whatever. Just to confirm, um, market at android.com has got movies on it if you are based in the US. Um, Can you lie to them no? and download them anyway? Like I, I haven't tried Apple. because the thing is, you're, you've got a, you've got to, you've got seventy two hours to watch it in, and that's that's, 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 that's twenty four hours longer than box office. The thing for me is, I mean, at the end of the day, they should actually just make it. You can watch it five times because I want to rent a movie and know that I want to get to it at some stage. Yeah, not I, I, I gather all this, but from what I gather, the, the, the people holding it back and putting those stipulations in. Oh, the movie the people, house, yeah. It's movie houses. So but in any case, know. then yep. Google is renting out at three ninety nine. So Priest, um, Something bo Borrowed, Paul, Limitless, Blitz, they're all three ninety nine. Talking about all this, I had an interesting experience. My folks finally got them to start using an iPod and iTunes. Now they want to buy music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't. Mm. Yes. You can. Uh, Move to Nigeria. No. No, not even there. You can buy apps from there. You can't buy music. The only place you can, you've got to then go to the US or, or UK, UK store. Does Australia and New Zealand work, maybe? Uh, we didn't go that far. Okay. I just got to point it was like... <laughs> Okay, chat to my brother who happens to be in England, get a voucher from him, we'll deal with this this weekend. But you know, my parents are wanting to be legit and get music. Can't. I yeah. can't. And, and, um, and nobody seems to be interested in doing anything about this except Nokia. So if you want to get your folks on that, it's a lot harder to use, um, especially if you don't have a Nokia device, than, um, than, than iTunes. But, I mean, Nokia's stuff at least works cross-platform. You, you can buy down other stuff off the website. Okay. So it's Avi Music is what it's called. Nokia has gone to the effort of cementing the copyright deals across regions. So in South Africa, if you go to uh, whatmusic.avi.com, a there's a fully-fledged music store there, charged in rands. It's, it's, I think, seven or eight rand a song, 100 rand an album. Uh, depending on what well, you get, some stuff is cheaper. Yeah. And the, what you download, can you? Uh, it sounds crazy, but can you import into iTunes? Yes, they they download as MP3s. Making me so sad. When I mean, so Nokia has done that. Have you actually? When's the last time you gone to maps. Dot, uh, dot, uh, Nokia dot com? Those are so good now, hey. They are amazing. And this this actually makes me excited. So sorry, we're not talking about international topics. Well, this is sort of locally yeah. relevant, but. Um, with, with the Nokia-Microsoft partnership. Imagine that. Windows Phone 7 with Nokia's platform, their music, their localized maps. They've got 3D mapping now in Cape Town, um, in, Cape Town in South Africa. They're, they're planning on extending it further. They've got traffic, free can live I, can traffic services. Can I give you what would have been better than that? <laughs> that on my Android. Yes, I know. And my thing is, I'm just not excited about the Microsoft Phone. It's yeah. Just, it doesn't excite me. Uh, but who no. said, even Chatters finally met, I finally met somebody who has one and I asked them about it. And they said, it's all it very works. pretty, but it, no, they said it actually doesn't work. Oh, that doesn't know. He says, pause the couple. You know, it's like freezes yeah. every now and again. Oh, oh the, the Windows Phone 7 devices. Yes. Yeah, which one does he have? I Did he say the Mozart, know. the Trophy? The, the later ones, because um, we, we reviewed the, the Omnia 7, it's a Sterling device, and Windows Phone 7 is actually a very slick OS. Slicker than Android in many respects out the box. Mm. I mean, Android, obviously, you can tinker and customize and yeah. make it cool, right? Yep. Um, but the, in South Africa at the moment, we have to wait for the Mango update for Windows Phone 7 to be in any way attractive to a South African. Um, for, for those who, who haven't followed the news, basically, without Windows Phone 7 Mango, um, there is no app store. Developers don't have access. But this has all been... Um, Microsoft has pushed, pushed this all forward. The, the App Store is now, or the Marketplace, they call it the, the Windows Phone Marketplace. Yeah. It's available to devs now. They can upload their apps. They can check South Africa. And when the Mango, when the Mango update comes, South Africans will be included immediately. So Microsoft have put all this stuff in place. It's ready to rock and roll. They just sort of uh, launched prematurely in South Africa, I think, to try and get a foothold early. Cool. Well, look, it seems I, strange. I, I must say, I hope, I hope they're successful. Strange enough, you know, I might be bashing on them. Just... Uh, it's not a phone. They haven't sold it to me in any way. Yeah, agreed. There's no way that I'm going to go out and want to buy the phone. Or, you know, look, I'm going to, in the end of the year, I'm going to go buy a smartphone for the next Android phone. I'm going to pay for that. I'm going to put my money down. I'm looking to get on contract. And if there was a, if the Windows phone was good enough, I, I, I would look at that. But it's just it's boring. It's boring. Well, nothing yes. boring. nothing boring. stands out. So I mean, I'm just hoping, look, I want a third horse in this yeah. race. 
I want another competitor. Yes. I want I want more competition. So it's not like I'm not I'm anti or anything. I want them to be successful. I want them to get out there and do stuff. But yeah. get out there and do something exciting. Do something different. Uh, An ad campaign of people dropping their stuff in a crib. That's not sorry. <laughs> it's boring. But do something different. You know, iPhone went off and the ad. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> go, go off and put something. The looks at the other guy and goes, seriously? Sure. Yes, when I've dropped my 6,000 Rand phone in the crib, I'm going to pick it up. I'm sorry. Yeah. And what, I hope it's not too wet. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what Microsoft is trying to sell their phone on is the software. So they're talking about enterprise integration, office integration, SharePoint, um, all, all that enterprise stuff. Nothing. How Apple excited the market was consumer level stuff. Mm, mm. So you got the man on the street excited and talking about In your product. In this country, people yeah. normally buy their own phones. You don't buy the phone for your company. Mm. Well, like an example, like you've been talking, you know, we, we integrate, you see your email, your Twitter, and your Facebook, all in one mailbox, all together. I'm going, Seismic that's does my that. worst nightmare. I don't want that. I, I, I have just each of those apps separate. So, you know, look, my mail's important. <laughs> so I look at my mail, whatever, and if I've got some free time, I'll, I'll look at twi uh, Twitter, and if I've got more free time, I'll look at Facebook. But I don't want those all together because I'm going to it's continually feel like I'm going to have to be answering this. And it just mm. just uh, never have that stuff on notification. Never <laughs> ever. <laughs> I have email because on and that's it. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, this has been turned You'll never be productive ever again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I know we're, we're kind of stuck in this topic and we need yeah. to move it yeah. along. Um, but uh, w one last thing I, I, I just wanted to add in there is um, the Nokia's reason, by the way. Their stated reason for those who also haven't been following the news and just need an update. Nokia's stated reason for going with Windows Phone 7 over Android is that they felt that the Android market was too saturated. There was no room for them to differentiate themselves against the Koreans that already dominate that space and who are, quite frankly, giving them a lashing in the, in, yeah. in the mobile phone space elsewhere. Um, so, uh, yeah. Look, I've I've it, I, me go. Come on. Yeah, anyway. Anyway, yes. <laughs> All right, I'm Moving getting some right other stuff. Um, something else interesting. I saw uh, it's OpenDNS and Google are basically going to get together, um, basically to help accelerate sites. But this is more for when you're doing content distribution. So you've got uh, Akamai would be an example of this. But I know they're not, they're not part of this. So normally, I don't know if you notice, it's like when you go to Google, you hit your DNS service. And because we have local DNS caches and you hit a local DNS service, it says, oh, wait, your IP comes from South Africa. And you get given the IP of the local server. Um, from what I go, this is actually one step further than that. And this actually sends through some of that IP and the request through to the servers. So they've got a bit more intelligence on in how to reach you. Okay, do you know what OpenDNS actually does for a living? Uh, blocking and spam and all the rest they of it. They give you a, your company the ability to actually you change all your DNS servers to use their DNS servers. Mm. And it gives you control over the DNS level query for getting to certain sites. And they give you a report back. So you could easily block Facebook and all their proxies and whatever by just using OpenDNS. Um, at the point of DNS query, it gets blocked then and returns back to the OpenDNS site. They also do real-time that if you've typed in the wrong... Um, currently, if you type in, in, your, in your Chrome the wrong URL, they'll search against Google. OpenDNS does the same service, but they try and actually then resolve against DNS entries. Yeah. So if you've typed the DNS name wrong, for like you spelled Google E L, uh, I'll give for you example. That. So this merger is very interesting because what it's telling me, the Open DNS paid uh, offering is more corporate centric. So this is more like Google now wanting to en enhance their corporate offerings to also now include some DNS services. I, I, which is quite interesting. I'm waiting for Google to open up DNS and you can start hosting your DNS inside Google. I'm still waiting for that. Yes. It's, it's soon. It's got to be there. It's They've got happen. two <laughs> DNS servers running. I mean, if you want, if you ever have a problem with DNS, try 444. Or 888. Or 888. That's two Google DNS servers. Yeah, they do. And we actually I have and they used are them. Quick. They're quick. Yeah, they're quick. And they work very nicely. There's always the fallback DNS. And I'll have it set it up as my permanent <laughs> secondary <laughs> DNS because I know it works. You know, it's sometimes... Easy one to remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that yeah. one has your... Four. Yes, yeah. yes. Which one? 444 or 888? 888. 8. 8. 8. What's that in IPv6? 8. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0
two something something in front of that, but I can't. There's probably can't some F, sort of shorthand. No, but it's pretty colon. much that. There's a there's a little front code, and there's a whole bunch of zeros, and then the IP. Yeah, but if there's a bunch of zeros, you can just have open colons. You don't yes. have to actually type the zero because you go colon colon colon. I, I've <laughs> played a lot for the IPv6 <laughs> at one stage. We must actually look at that again when, when we have free time. Yeah, one of those. We we'll put it on the list. Yeah. Anyway, list two. It's lovely. <laughs> Very pretty. What's it? I love, I love the, the sound of uh, deadlines <laughs> whooshing as the sound yes. deadlines make as they whoosh wish past. past. All right. Um, Quintin, uh, the guy f- from Geek, one of our, our guests that we get on quite often, uh, he wrote, he did some research on WhatsApp messages recently, which is quite interesting, and he found out all the messages are in clear text. Everything. Terrible. Which is not good, but I'm still going to use it because it just works so well. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so... The message from my phone to their servers is sent in clear text. Yes. And it's received in clear and text. And the replies. Back and the clear okay, text. so the communication between you. So you don't even have to like try to hack it. So more of the story is don't transmit bank account numbers through WhatsApp, no. please. And but that's sorry, that's any instant messenger. I mean you log into Google we, is SSL Google. encrypted. Yeah. Okay. But but this is X Skype is encrypted. Why haven't they encrypted it? It I mean it's it's part of the messaging format. Is it XMPP? Understand. Yeah, it even says here. If you go and look at the message from the the actual article, you can st- you can you can see it clearly over there. Look, it's not 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 hard to do certs with all these things. No, it's maybe it's hard. just they don't want to fork over the cashola well, for the, the how, cert. how hard is like getting I mean, a full it's certificate? It's not even the most expensive certificate yeah, on yeah. the planet. I mean, yeah, uh, it's an HTTPS certificate is like the cheapest one, isn't it? I know the code signing ones are stupidly cheap, okay. but look, you can even yeah. get free ones. Yeah. Now look, they're not very secure. It's 128 bits, but it's good enough. <laughs> yeah. You know, or, or do you own? It's your app. It's your server. Yeah. <laughs> do you own? Um, you you should be running encryption, and running compression on top of that. Yeah. Now, yeah. Even if they don't compress Especially it. if you're going to target phones for crying out loud. <laughs> no, that, that's quite cool. So plain text XMPP not even compressed. Yeah. Oh, worst ever. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I've got to come up for the compression part. I mean you. They're trying to support the most platforms. You want to add compression to, uh, what's it, y- uh, Nokia? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You running just put it right into here. You're, you're running HTTP. It's got it's graceful degradation. You grab GZIP. Yeah. You grab a GZIP library. And hey, it, Presto. It, it, Done. All your web Sorted. servers, 99%. If you've been onto Google with your phone. GZIP. Yeah, but I've got an Android. I'm saying. Maybe even BZIP too. Have you been, I've been onto Google with my Nokia. And it all works. Mm. It, it, now they've it's got, got the graceful, de- uh, where it degrades down to be estimately non-compressed but in the headers it says it's available and all the rest of it okay well good well well caught quinton um yeah throw that story out to some of the newspapers let's see if they probably 24 hours later were encrypted <laughs> there's a there, there's a newspaper sitting here um but I'll, I'll definitely dig um i'll see if something else has come up but that's this is quite interesting i i, I can't believe that nobody else has done this if nobody honest. else, if nobody else has done this, Quinton, flipping hats off. Well this done. Is really cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. Quinton, congrats. Well, never mind hats off. You know, he looked, he did it. Yeah, hats off. absolutely. Um, um, and now talking about certificates, we've got a lot of. I see we've got two topics that lead into this. One, one we've taken out. I'm just going to mention it. Um, there is apparently a Google certificate in the wild that has let people do man in the no, middle attacks. There's a certificate that is signed to Google. It doesn't belong. So I'm just getting the wording yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, sure. That doesn't. It's not a certificate that Google signed. It's another certification authority yes. that has signed a certificate for Google. Yeah. Okay. It's Nominet or Nomi something like that. Does it say, uh, so it's not actually Google's private key? No, no. it's not their real private key. You go star.google. Yeah, uh, if, just to explain how this thing works, you go to your certification authority. You say, I have the site and I request a cert. Yes. Uh, and, I, and they might give it to you. Now, there was a one t- couple months ago where there was a, a thing where the people could request any, I belong to any URL uh, that they wanted, and they would get a cert for that, a valid cert. Um, and this, they say this is something similar, and they were hacked a couple of weeks ago, and it's only come to light now. Admittedly, this is only coming around somewhere in the Middle East that the cert has become been visible. The only place that could work is for a man in the middle attack. Yes. Yeah, it's for a man in or, the middle or, attack. Yeah, you, you can fake to be Google. Man in the middle. Yeah, so you're basically trying to catch people's passwords and because, stuff. Because, I mean, your browser looks at your URL and then looks at the certificate. So even if you've got a Google a certificate, if my URL doesn't say Google, it's not going to work. Yeah. So the only place this could work is man in the middle. Yeah, but, I mean. Well, there are other ways. Yeah, true. You would have to spoof either DNS or. Oh, so the, there's, the there's, yeah. there's very easy man in the middles. But, I mean, your workstation, uh, your browser needs to be convinced 
that it is looking at google.com to then look at the certificate and match it to up. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yes, there's a problem with them uh, issuing the certificates, but... Having said that, they've... Uh, Google Chrome, Firefox, I th- not Safari. Safari was mm-hmm. not on the list. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, the Conqueror, a lot of the... I-9s? Uh, they didn't mention IE. I don't know. They might be in there. I can't say can't that. Can't remember, yeah. They've yeah. all gone and basically invalidated all certs from this... From Nominate. From Nominate. Ouch. Because That's your like CA business. Yeah. I mean, if your browsers won't use those certs... Yeah. I mean, imagine imagine that, like Google Chrome or or um, especially Google Chrome with its rapidly increasing popularity, or Firefox or now IE, which is um, still the w- most widely used browser, drops your CA. Well, normally what they'll do at that point is they'll be issued with a new cert, and they'll go to all the clients and say, just log in and download a new cert. Sure, but now that Nominet is not a, not a trusted authority anymore. Only the old search gets... Uh, okay, so they so just basically so revoke every search and, and then keep on business. Okay, cool. All right, moving right along. All right. Uh, Pakistan bans encryption. You wanted to mention this. No, no, no. I think I did. Oh, yes. um, sorry. I, I, I don't know. I didn't really read it too hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pakistan's basically wanting to ban encryption. Um, so it's VPNs and all the rest of it. And they want because they want to do something similar to the Great Wall of China. And they want to watch everything the guys do. They, they were also the guys that had a big problem with BBM and all the rest of it, um, which was quite interesting. I saw on a slash of this, some guys are trying to get together again and start, um, what's it, cyber cyber hacking and cyber... Hacktivism. Cyberpunks, that was the word. Cyber okay. Hacktivism. Yeah. And that's basically getting VPN tools, encryption mechanisms out into the public. So it's good encryption, publicly available to the masses. Saying, you know, the government's trying to look too much into people. Let's get together and stop them. Let's actually start putting these tools out there so it was a uh, pretty good privacy, P- PGP, it was things like that. And I remember PGP was also at the forefront of this k- kind of movement in the U.S. when the U.S. banned forms of strong encryption mm-hmm. um, a- under, under the same uh, clauses as weapons of mass destruction. And, um, and I That's remember the, the, the T-shirts with, the, I think it was an encoded barcode, an encrypted barcode. And they say, you, you are looking at a... source code. <laughs> <laughs> a very small, <laughs> smallly typed on it. It says, "I'm walking around with with a weapon of mass destruction." Yes. So, um, y- yeah, th- this is one of those things. Like governments need to learn that you cannot unring the bell. Um, yeah. I thought they were just following suit. It's like maybe the governments are starting to feel like this is a good idea. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're doing it in China, they're doing it in India, why not? And, uh, and I mean, in South Africa, apparently, um, the, the fact that we didn't have strong encryption laws is what left the door open for Mark Shuttleworth to make his bucks. That's how he started Thought, right? So yeah. um, the Americans could not have strongly signed certification uh, certs. So he started Thought. We could have much stronger AES encryption and stuff um, in, our, in our certificates in South Africa. That has now, I think, been blocked. I'll just follow that up again. But I think strong encryption is now illegal in this country. You find you might not be able to export it. I think you might be able to use it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. E- yeah. Export controls. But um, I mean, what in which capacity? As you, as a private user, or you, as corporate entity? Uh, Everyone. Yeah, I think I think that they're, they're all seen as end users. Okay, it's, okay. Uh, yeah, now a lot. Of, even in America, already these things are actually considered like weapons. So if you take through, you, let's say you develop an incredibly strong encryption mechanism that no one can break and you take it over and you give it to the Americans, that can actually be seen as you selling weapons over to American. That's quite shocking, actually. But yeah. if you think about it, uh, it's actually, you know, information is becoming the new. So I can sa- understand the logic behind Yeah, I can it, also understand But on logic. the other side, it's sort of like, yeah. Anyway, let's move on a bit. Um, I wanted to chat a bit about Waytag. Cool. Uh, What's that? I saw it pop up again. Have you not heard about it? No. I'm sure I have. I might have just forgotten uh, about it's, it. It's one of... Macy, uh, I'm gone blank on his first name. Stafford Macy. Yes. He's one of these projects, uh, saw it on ZA Tech Show the first time. And okay. Chat about it. It's basically, it gives you a short name to GPS location. Okay. Um, Which is kind of something, XKCD came up with something like that. Basically a hashing algorithm for... Well, this is more, oh. you can register, let's say, your name. Okay. And then you can go into the website and update that name with the location. Um, it's like a URL shortening service then. Sort of, <laughs> yes. Um, and there's a BlackBerry app now and there's an iPhone app. There's supposed to be an Android app but uh, that what's been coming now for a year. My question with all this thing, they're pushing it quite hard. I've been seeing it going around Twitter again is, what's the point? Same point as Foursquare, isn't it? There is none. Well, <laughs> you can be the king of nowhere. <laughs> no, yes. I want to send somebody a location. I admittedly, I use WhatsApp and I send them my location. 
I don't need to say, okay, go look on Waytag this name. I just send them the, the information. You know, in the old days, maybe it was a bit hard. I was wondering if anybody else had any ideas why you might want to. I just keep on trying to think of a use for it. When would I use? When would I say, here's my 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 way tag, you can follow me because I've got Google Latitude. It's like okay, well, I'll do a friend request with you, and then I can hide from you. And when I don't want you to see me, or whatever, I just go here. Mm. Well, I can send you the location. Yes, yeah. Um, a Google Latitude, and, and maybe maybe this is what what way tag can offer because this is what I'm seeing and. and um, the, the open services, services that aren't locked to platforms, are the ones that, that gain traction very quickly. And Latitude seems to be linked, not completely, but I mean, most of the best features are on Android only. Um, so, uh, like real time tracking is, is one. Checking in is not available on the iPhone yeah, from but Latitude directly. You can directly. track people on Androids, and the main reason why you don't have real time tracking on the iPhone is just. There yeah, yeah, I know. There's, yeah, and there's no real-time tracking on BlackBerry either. Mm -hmm. um, so, so real-time tracking is one thing, but the other thing is checking in. Um, like, I, I've got the Latitude and Places app on the iPhone, and I can't check in. Do so, you, do you need places to check into? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did at the time, yeah. like w when I was trying it out. Uh, now okay, I don't. So what now you I both check actually anymore. said is there is a place for Waytag because the current services are not available on all platforms. But then they need to move quickly because Latitude is this close. Yes, to being Latitude available. is yeah. that close. They've yeah. been going for a while. There's no Android app. Um, and it has less functionality than, than Latitude does now have on iPhone. Yeah. This doesn't mean that there, there isn't room oh, for competition. It's, it's good, but you need to move. Well, look, it's South African one, so I want them to do well. That's just more... It sounds funny. I'm just trying to... Do you come back like, on, on the question? Do you come yeah. back on the question about the short threads? or the shortened um, names, yeah. names, there's always place for that. I mean, because if you've, if you've got to give coordinates as in verbal, the shorter you need to translate, the better. That might well, be cool, be able to give them my broadband, because we, we are in I'm such an course, obscure location, yeah. mm. to, to be able to go exclamation mark, my broadband. And, and then you just feed that into a GPS and or it downloads our well, GPS coordinates. Well, even for saying the address over the phone, maybe, then you wouldn't even have to say, you know, I'm at this whatever location. Yeah. You could just say, here, and, and find me to at use Mercator. Waytag. <laughs> My point is, at this point yeah. in time, I do that less. It's sort of like, are you on WhatsApp? Okay, well, I'll send you my location. Fair. Or are True. you, and I've, I've added, let's say, in Google Maps, I've added, our oh, works also where you think guys get lost at the time because we inside the building, you've got to black wrangle. I've actually put us into Google Maps. So go into Google Maps, type us. There's exact coordinates with uh, a satellite map. Street view as well. Mm. Yeah. This, yeah. They yeah, might, they see, might see yeah, I don't a think market. The phone and talking across like that. But I mean, to, to give GPS coordinates verbally, um, and then the fact that there's three options on giving coordinates. I mean, you've got... And then that's in uh, one uh, coordinate system. That's that's just in WGS84. You've got you know uh, what decimal decimal degrees. Yeah, yeah, des yeah decimal yeah. degrees, degrees, minutes, seconds, yeah. and degrees, decimal minutes. There we go. So that's if, if it wasn't for Google Latitude, yes, it would be a great great product. It would would make life a lot easier. Yeah, so it might be that they're so aiming for that. And but uh, uh, they need to add search. That's the other thing. But yeah, th then I guess I guess the moral of the story here is they need to move. Mm. Um, before these other international guys that are like 40 times, bit 400 million times bigger, um, uh, you know, squash them. Um, so, cool. yeah, while the, while the market's there, seize it. All right. With both hands. Okay, we're going to move on a bit quickly. Did you want to talk about the HTC sensation? Yeah, we can do that quickly. quickly. Do, do, do you mind? Go All right. It. So the HTC sensation, for those who haven't been keeping track, I'm reviewing one. All mm. right, so... Um, this is the HTC sensation. And one of the, the coolest things about this uh, device is the, the strong design language that HTC have uh, incorporated into it. Uh, and part of it is the fact that this thing is, it's almost like a solid body. It feels like a solid body. There's no back cover that you can pop off. What you do is there's a little button at the bottom and you, you pop the whole thing off. But this has turned into a massive design flaw. And uh, let, me, let me show you guys why. Oh, the whole right, so, case comes so off. So the whole oh, case yeah. comes off. All right, so sorry, I'm a bit close to the camera there. So this is now the case. This is the phone. Okay, I'm going to put the phone aside because I, I just want to show you what happens. You've got these contacts. Okay, so you've got contacts there, there, and you've got a contact at the bottom. And uh, you've got a little hole here at the top where your headphone goes in, right? So now you'll check that um, when I unlock my phone, um, I've got no signal. 
and sorry, the zoom is a bit uh, is focused on me, so you can't really see anything. So take my word for it. There's no signal, right? And uh, eventually, that signal it's going to be disconnected. So there seems to be um, an issue the with exposing the antenna. Yeah. Um, so this boosts the antenna. And eventually, you can do stuff. You can put this in your hand or put it down on something, and the whole antenna will disconnect until you pop it back in the case. I right? believe the Dell yeah, Streak... You're not supposed to use it like that. Yes, but this is all part of a, all part of a bigger story. I believe okay. the Dell Streak also does something similar to that. But what they do is when you take off the back cover, which is also appears to be the aerial, um, then th the, the, f the phone turns off. So, oh, uh, Interesting. So that's how worse. they got aware around yeah. it. Yeah. So, for instance, right now, at least my, I've not been disconnected, but I've been thrown from HSPA to GPRS. Cool. Okay. Now, the moral of the story is that this thing causes grounding problems. Um, for those who watched my review, you'll remember that I said that the touchscreen feels unresponsive. Well, it's not once the grounding is right or the, the, the minus you know, polarity is, uh, isn't floating or whatever the problem is, um, all of a sudden it responds like a dream. It's quick, it's slick, it does its job beautifully. Um, but now, uh, so now I pop it back in the cover and I, I plug in a, sorry, I'm, I'm up here, and I plug in a headset, which I tested today, uh, listening to music. It randomly dials numbers. Actually, it dialed, most specifically dials the last dialed number, Ouch. the last received number. It, it skips tracks. Oh, they've got the, 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 the so phone the, system in there is obviously so not wired correctly. So my, my headphone jack obviously touches something, something. And according to blog posts and forum threads I've read, it's the antenna. It oh, actually shit. touches against the antenna as you're in. Like, you cannot use a headset on this thing. Like, I've been unable to get it to work. The guys say that sometimes it's the, it's the, the paint inside that scratches off with wear and tear. This is the first time I've put a headset in this device, and it doesn't work properly. So, um, like... Fail. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very disappointing. How's yeah, the fail. Atrix going? The Atrix, I've not switched it on yet. Okay. No, sure. wait. Yeah. No. <laughs> Oh, that's major foul. That is yeah. like so. This has to. This review. I'm going to try to write it up tomorrow. Um, I mean, that's that's truly unacceptable. So, so people we haven't seen. This is his. Um, nice. You are cover. you mocking my Watchman phone? So have a nice day. <laughs> yo. Have a nice day. <laughs> have a nice, have a nice day. day. Yeah. And and the thing is, the HTC sensation, by all other, you know, in all other regards except the camera, is a fantastic phone. Not that the camera's bad, but it doesn't compare well against the likes of the Galaxy S2 or the iPhone, for that matter. And it really needs to compete with the iPhone 4 at this stage. Um, but like, once the, once the grounding is, is up, the carousel works beautifully, the phone is slick and fast, it's beautiful, I've got Android 2.4 so in here now. So you want to say you've got to hold that phone correctly. How, doesn't you, this sound like the, holding the, it the iPhone? doesn't even help. Where you had to initially hold it not a certain no, way it, so that you it, can get reception. Do it, they still have that problem? No, it's actually a non-issue it turned out to be. It was a software glitch. Look, not that there's some not something wrong with that design. I disagree. You can uh, disagree we, with uh, that. I, 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 want, to, I want to disagree. I, I've, I've <laughs> Cecilia's done it. I watched Barry who will go through burning fire for his Apple. iPhone and Apple. Uh, he was like, watch. <laughs> <laughs> He's done it to me a couple of times. Okay, well, this is my iPhone 4. I'm going to dispute you, this right now. Apparently, some of them, have they, on the later versions, they, did, they fixed it somehow. Now, which gen of iPhone have you got there? I don't know. The, f the, the, the ones that launched in South Africa the first day the iPhone became available. Fixed. Okay. All yeah, right, so yeah. full bar in the ones that launched in South Africa. Yeah, they made so it So I'm death gripping it. Death gripping and it. And I'm at full strength on cell C, which doesn't count for much. <laughs> um... So I know that's mean, but I've had full strength 3G signal on Celsius. You've got and to had no apparently they, they put a bit All of right. a on some of the latest just over that thing and they fixed it a lot of it. But no, no, it really does exist. I promise it's not okay. it's not a software bug. I All read right, a lot of stories back in the when it so came out. So the ones out, that hit South Africa were fixed. Some that's the one of the first of ones. I've seen I've seen guys. No, Barry had one of the first ones and it, he he did it. That is, I, I can go pull. It's in our. We did it on live. He was like, watch. Wow. Yeah, and I've dealt with Cecilia's, who's also quite new. You were lucky. Okay, I'm lucky. All right, cool. Uh, we're just going to move on along a bit. But more. like you said, it's on cell C. <laughs> you might just be lucky to get a signal in the first place. <laughs> I, I'm going to get kicked. Uh, I'm going to get kicked. Cell C is actually quite, quite fine it. in terms of voice coverage. Mm -hmm. um, it's their 3G. <laughs> Luke I'm going to disagree. <laughs> because, I mean, I, I work right next to a cell phone tower. I'm like maybe not even 200 meters from the damn thing. I can't even call my mom if I want to do on the... <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, my yeah. phone doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. So okay. it's terrible. I, I only managed to get us to lose... 
one bar. The, the thing is, I've <laughs> tested that on Celsi and Vodacom, and um, the, like if, if, if it were a statistical test, then it would be negligible. Cool. Um, well, look, you've yeah. just burst the bubble about the sensation, so let's just stay with that, <laughs> <laughs> and let's move along. Okay. Um, just a question, sorry. Can, I'm going to give you my, maybe there's a problem with the, with the headset. Oh, I tried a BlackBerry headset next, and that didn't work either. No, but so I used the stock you, headset. Let me give you another HTC headset. And let's just see what happens. Okay, we'll try it now. Is uh, it the uh, standard mic? Mm. And, and the Bluetooth. line in yeah, okay. the standard line in <laughs> combined mic jack thing. Okay. All right, now I'm just, I can give you a Bluetooth headset. <laughs> um, Bluetooth, by the way, works just yeah. fine, obviously. Yeah. Right, uh, moving along. Uh, I, I'm not going to read what you you, what you, you typed there. Yeah, what you, you should not, in fact, read what I typed there. That's for internal use only. I know. That's what I'm going to let you into. <laughs> All this. right. So basically, um, uh, so for, it looks like our last story is, is another fairly negative one in terms of what happened in South Africa today. SARS on Monday leaked tens of thousands of email addresses to clients. I'm not exaggerating by any stretch here. I have, I have it like on record, at least 35,000 addresses were leaked. Right, which is not a big deal if you consider that they deal with yeah, millions of individuals. But that's the whole e-filing yes. subscriber base. No, 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 no. The e-filing subscriber base is like two million people. No, no, no. It's like well, no. still, if it's still 0.1 percent of the population, I'm sorry, that's too much. Yeah, yeah. it's it's hectic. Uh, of and it's so 35,000 of a million. More the type of you are going to use e-filing, the more affluent. Yeah, well, folks like me and you, surely. Yeah. I, I well, this e-file. Is, this was yeah, okay, so they've the probably got my email address. Th- th- this it? was leaked to employers. So, oh so employers who registered because it went out with an email for um, income tax registration. So, oh. so um, it went out to. So, when the finance employers. department has already been deleted, so it's yeah, actually it a non-story. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but 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 um, just so you guys know, this is what happened. SARS have been very apologetic. They've suspended people. They said they're taking it very seriously. They they are using uh, the the might that they have in the Income Tax Act to say that if they catch anybody distributing these email addresses, they're going to prosecute them criminally. Good luck to them. Uh, I don't know if that's possible. Well, it's possible legally, but possible to track them down. I'm trying to figure out in my mind. They obviously weren't using Outlook. Because Outlook <laughs> cannot take 35,000 email <laughs> no, addresses. No, it's a mass mailer one. system. The, the current working theory is yeah, that the, the person on the if, job... If it got mailed out to the finance department or the bosses, right? It, it's it's 10,000 in total, but it's small batches every time. Actually, the, the way they explained it is that they send them out in batches of about 20,000. And to, right now, we've confirmed that two batches leaked. One of 20,000 addresses and one of 15,000 addresses. Okay. All right, so, so and, and um, these were uh, batches eight and like five or three or something like that. Um, so, so that's the two batches where the mail servers actually went, okay, well, the processes. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. And the other ones and went, what? Yeah, no, no, no. Well, what, what uh, the working theory is is that this seems to be a relatively manual thing. So basically what we think happened is this was a CSV file. So I think makes it even more terrible. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and I think they gave they gave the person on the job the CSV file to say, okay, you send out to this batch, or maybe they just gave him all b- like nine billion CSV files, and then manually they went, you know, uh, import the CSV files email addresses to send this email batch out, please. And uh, <laughs> what we think happened is is that that person clicked attach instead of clicking import. So they oh, attach the CSV to okay, the mail. Now, now it makes sense. Then import the email, blast it out. Because they attach, they're like, oh, hang on. And then click send. They're like, there are no recipients. You know, the, the, the email, the, it's probably some sort of web mass mailing yeah. system. And it goes, eh, error. He's like, oh, what the hell? Okay, um, let's try the import button. Obviously, the attach button didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and well, it worked. And, and, and yeah, and obviously that person didn't know okay, what attach so does. I, I was trying to figure out how do you... Was this like 20,000 email addresses in the two? I'm like, half <laughs> of the servers out there will go, no. Yeah. But, okay, yeah, now it makes sense yeah. what you're saying. Atta- so attach the CSV file, off we go. Yeah. So, so pretty bad. Uh, Failed. <laughs> yeah. Face palm. Well, Face palm. <laughs> well the desk. first, like yeah. you said, the first mistake is CSV, CSV. file. But having said oh. that, how often have you accidentally attached the wrong thing or emailed the wrong person? No, a lot. It happens. All done it. It, it, it happens. happens. I've emailed the wrong person, but I've never, I've, I've not attached something when I should have attached something. Yes, yeah. that's, that's a common one. Yeah. yeah. I've, well, I've attached the wrong file. You know, it's like click, and so one just it's below like, that. It's, sorry, please ignore that porn. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that wasn't like, for you. It was more, it was like a random file that the person couldn't open. It was like <laughs> that's a garbage. It's like, oh, sorry. I had it once, so uh, one Winery of my staff files. members decided to email the world a little, very porny, photograph, and I decided, well, I've had enough of him, so I'll reply all. 
and actually put him as the main and the rest of CC is shitting uh, or, or crapping on him to say, don't do it again. Not actually after hitting said, realizing I just said to say porn to everybody. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, I might have just wanted to take the porn out before doing that. Yeah. So yeah, that was also, also a head hard. desk moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just going to move us over through to the kicker. Yes, do it. All right, we have two this way once again. Uh, the first one is Blueprints of the Star Wars Galaxy. Yeah, um, I must click on this. Basically, the Star Wars Bitter. people have come out and they've produced a book. Um, and they've got all the blueprints from the first couple Star Wars. So I can so build my own Death Star? Not of... You can build the models that they yes, use you can. in the movie. Oh, but not an actual Death Star. You can build but the that's Death still Star. cool. I want a model. How These big are, are those models? I mean, if they are like within the realms of meters... Then I want one. These are very cool, <laughs> and it's it's the, it's very nice detailed blueprints that these guys did. Um, if you actually look at this video, YouTube video, which I'll mix them up, you'll pull up now quickly, uh, and we can get audio. Oh, that's very cool. Go for it. Okay, we can't hear I'll the audio out here. Yeah, we can't. That's fun. Engineering. Okay. Oh, it's it's it, is this like license to? Yeah, you know, it's owned by, by Lucas, yeah. Ah, uh, a book. Yes. Okay, and we're back. <laughs> All right, so um, you wanted to ask, Blu-ray? The, the Blu-ray version of The Phantom Menace now, what they have done subsequently is they removed more of the hand puppetry and put more CG in for Yoda and stuff like that. I so don't know. Part of me sort of likes the old feel of it. You know, it's, it's some of the old special effects. But I, I'm sort of halfway between the two. That's why you will have both versions. But remember, any changes to the original Star Wars movies... It's all sanctioned by George Lucas. I know. So it's him going, I would have loved it to look like that. And he makes a change. Or, hmm. or making Greedo shoot first. I wish, wish to buy <laughs> Why? Ex I, I wish to buy something more. I need more money. Okay. Yes, Let's yeah. make did, another version. Did, did, to put you, things in perspective. Did you see the price of this um, little collector's no. lupins? I can it's quite expensive. $450. I'll put it on my it's Christmas It's large list. format, eh? It's not a it's not a small book. It's quite a large book, and it's you know high high quality printing. Mm. And, all that and and before I think the mics came back on, um, four hundred and fifty dollars, <laughs> oh, including shipping. A, a good a good uh, <laughs> Christmas gift. Yeah, for Johan. <laughs> so anybody wanting to like make Johan really happy, oh you know yes, what to get him. your lovey, <laughs> my love, my sweetheart, four hundred and fifty dollars. All right, but, uh, and I'm just going to mention our competition before. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I just wanted to add one thing. Before mm. we came back online with the microphones, Johan said that, um, that it's amazing how this franchise is able to just continue doing stuff to print money. And to put things in perspective there, I, uh, I believe I saw the date on the Empire Strikes Back, um, uh, and it's 19... No, it was Return of the Jedi, mm. the last one. Oh, mm. Last. Um, last one. Yeah, yeah uh, 1983. Six. Like there is only one Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, it's a pity they didn't make any more. Yeah, it's a pity they didn't make any more <laughs> Matrix movies. Um, th and that's the year I was born. And, like, it's still they are making yeah, more no, Star make, Wars fans. You're making me feel old. <laughs> you're making me feel old. But I mean, there were two Star Wars movies before the one that was made when I was born. How hardcore is that? And they yes. still managed to make me a fan. Well, I got the newsletter it's from cool. them to just say that the ticket sales for next year's celebration -y Star Wars event is going on sale in September. So if you want to go and attend this in Las Vegas, just do a Google. <laughs> <laughs> Las Vegas is an expensive town, I hear. So I start saving see. now. But what happens in Vegas? <laughs> stays it's in your Vegas. bank account. Cool. All right. I just want to mention our competition again. Uh, we're giving a... Well, we, the competition you can win is a MSP 430 launch pad. And the first prize... We have three of those. And the first person also gets a capacitive touch booster. All right, and all you have to do is make up an email address, something interesting at Let's Talk Network or TV, mail us. Just put something in there just so we know that you are going for the competition. You're not just a spam bot trying to oh. spam us. 
um, <laughs> because you know, I might not see your mail. You might, you know, even if you type, I'm a spam bot trying to spam you, I think we'll let It'll that get in. through. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Win. Just in, in the body, just say, oh, I'm not, ha, 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 whatever. Yeah. All right. um, we've had two mails this week, um, and one of them, the person's na uh, email address that they sent it to was, knock, knock, who's there? Control freak. Okay, now you say, okay, control freak who? <laughs> <laughs> um, and he was mentioning about uh, doing double speed with uh, his iPod and that it can only go up to 1.5 which seems to be the normal thing with most of them um, I know with Android you can hack it and make it to 2 but it's actually a bit inaudible listening to it and that was from Brian Tristan Williams so thanks for your math uh, you're fairly high at the moment <laughs> cool <laughs> and the uh, other one <laughs> I've lost it oh. I can't find it uh, is there somewhere I must uh, oh, I'll find it <laughs> I still I'll mean to week. enter, okay. but I keep Mention forgetting. <laughs> right, and now yeah. we can go into our last uh, kicker, which is basically what they did is they got two uh, bots. So these are our bots. Chatbots. Uh, Chatbots. Um, and it's AI research, and they normally get them to, to fool people that, you know, there's actually a real person on the outside. But what the they did Turing this time test, yes. is they made them speak to each other. And it's actually quite incredible. It's amazing. I don't know if you've obviously heard it. Yeah. Mixer, do you want to just start it up? Okay, now we need to be quiet, apparently. That's us. Cool. I just thought that was brilliant. It's quite okay, but I've seen one major fail in this whole thing. Robots what? having an existential crisis. What? No, no. Put two 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 female robots and see what happens then. <laughs> they had one male and one female. I mean, the logic would just keep on going forever and ever. I think that and they ever. just happened to pick avatars for the bots. I don't think the bots are. I thought the accents were rather creepy for some for 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 bot using. I mean. You know, you're you're still expecting all good old Microsoft noises to come out of bots, but yeah. now today's text to speech seems to be getting and rather good. And it's very natural speech, be yeah. and because you can see there are there are typos. I don't know how that happens in a chat bot, but like it's it, there's a typo for two instead of saying two, it's spelt O T, and the bot actually tries to say it that way. So these aren't pre-recorded sounds for words. No. So what they did with Cleverbot is interesting because they released it as like a social kind of study. So you release it into the wild, and people talk at it, and, and it learns from people. So what, what happens is a lot of the responses come here because of people who, you know, internet trolls will go and try and troll Cleverbot, and it learns those kinds of responses. And that's why you get that kind of conversation that you have there. It doesn't really make any sense, but... Uh, also means a lot of people will misspell too. <laughs> exactly. So um, it's just learned that's what you do. Which um, is quite possible because your right hand's cleverer than your left. Sorry, O is on right and T is on left. Yeah, yeah. So, so it is. So if you're typing, <laughs> it's quite a probability. I, I, I do it quite often. It's the one. But it's a common typo. Yes. So yeah. yeah. And that, but that means somebody didn't turn their autocorrect on. Noob. Yeah, it's but they a don't web-based thing. Yeah. Chats. Uh, okay. No, there's also a web-based thing, so you can yeah. you can have a one-on-one -on -one with Cleverbot, and it's it's really creepy. Um, yeah, uh, I believe that's the comp that's part of the competition at least is the bot needs to be able to fool you into yes. thinking that it's a human. Yes. And the Turing test actually doesn't use natural speech. wasn't wasn't originally designed for natural speech. Not not that it can't use it, but um, a a computer terminal was an acceptable way to pass yes. the Turing test. 
Well, so because in those days you couldn't quite get natural speech, but yeah. they could get text, and they're still following that. And you find once they eventually do pass that level, because there's nothing that's really quite. They, they got close this last year, I think. Mm. It was it was fairly close, and actually there's a couple of humans that got called bots. Uh, <laughs> um, so it's getting very close. Um, but at that point, you find they'll up it now. It will need to speak naturally and stuff. But look at uh, Watson. Who's Watson? Don't you know what? You, come on, you must know Watson. The one that Sherlock Holmes partner. Oh, yes, he's the one that won Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah, we, we did that in the show one day. Yes, we did. Yes. Shows you my short-term memory. <laughs> <laughs> memory shouldn't be a problem for you. Cool. All right. With that, uh, we're going to end. I just want to thank Johan Als for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Luke. Luke. No, Pocketo. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I, keep blank, I keep on going blank on the surnames. He's von Vermeulen. I know it's Jan for me. I've, I've memorized this. I've gone through it. And it's Jan VZA. And I'm not going to get it wrong again. the mixer so is still mi the mixer. Yes. It's no surname. Person who shall not be named. No, they have a sur they have a surname. We just, our lives are not worth. Uh, oh, that's true. Uh, the claws will kill you. The Rolf of last <laughs> time's event was just not to be repeated in no. any podcast. Well, we, we don't know. There were no survivors. So. But that, that 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 leads yeah. us to why the we room's did. rather clean then from the last time. <laughs> 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 we have a room. It yeah. wasn't this. What have uh, you seen? We swapped uh, rooms. Okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Good night. Cheers. Boom, 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 boom. Sweet. Wait, wait. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, play it. Oh, shit. Boom, 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 boom. I was going to do some Not normally this bad. What I, what I, See, we'll have fun. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. In the jungle, the mighty jungle. No? <laughs> you do know she's hit record. <laughs> <laughs>